Hey guys, thanks for checking out this video. This is going to be another Toy Photography Basics video and this one's gonna to be totally about camera settings. Getting to know your camera, its settings, and what it can do can really be a huge game changer. So like I said many times before, I'm not a camera expert. I don't really have a background in photography, but I have learned quite a bit about my camera and uh, what the best settings are for me and for different kinds of toy photography. So that's what I'm gonna be going over in this video. I'm gonna kind of walk through three of what I think are the most important camera settings that you need to have in mind when you set up your shot and what you have in your vision. Uh, and once you have that kind of basic understanding of these three settings, it's going to really make it so much easier for you to get what you have in your head on to the camera with the toys and everything um, and really make that vision come to life. And if you like this kind of content, toy photography, tutorials, Stuff like this, I definitely would recommend subscribing. I've got an entire playlist of just toy photography tutorials and then another one of just toy photography basics. And I've got a whole lot more I'm gonna be making. So I definitely would recommend subscribing if you haven't. And plus it helps me out quite a bit uh, if you decide to, so thanks. So the first setting is your shutter speed. And what the shutter speed is, is it's the length of time the sensor in your camera is exposed to light, basically. Uh, but, or how I like to call it, it's basically how fast your camera is taking the picture. <laughs> That's how I think of it. So having a fast shutter speed is really good for action and, and capturing motion. I almost always am shooting with a very fast shutter speed because uh, I really want to capture every single little particle or spark or debris, you know, very, very quickly and very crisply. And that's usually around one four thousand or so. That's the max my camera will go. If you're trying to shoot action or movement with a little bit more of a slower shutter speed, uh, the, you know, all the moving particles in the photo will look a bit more blurry or out of you know, more of a motion blur, uh, as opposed to that very crisp looking capture, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Which isn't necessarily a bad thing at all, it's really just up to your preference. But when you're trying to get that quick action motion, it's definitely good to have as fast of a shutter speed as possible. But the thing about increasing your shutter speed is it makes your photo darker and darker and darker. The faster your shutter is, the darker the photo will get. So uh, that's why it's good when you're trying to shoot in action to have lots of light. So uh, if you're shooting outside using lots of sunlight on a sunny day, it's great for getting like water and dirt uh, and debris and just that kind of motion. It's really good if you're shooting in, in, in the light, really. And if you don't necessarily have that kind of light, like or the sun isn't necessarily shining as bright as you would like it, bring some other light into the photo with a loom cube or some kind of LED or any kind of uh, external light that you have. And that will definitely help brighten up your photo a little bit once you turn your shutter down. So for example, if you're trying to shoot some really cool action with some water uh, or with some dirt or something like that, I definitely recommend having as much light as possible. Uh, even use one of those light reflectors. I use those all the time uh, just to get that kind of light that you want. But then on the other hand, if you're trying to shoot with fire or explosions, you want to have that light so you can have a fast shutter. But at the same time, if you have too much sunlight, it's going to kind of drown out you know, the brightness of the fire or the brightness of the sparks. So with explosions, fireworks, you know, I do that kind of thing a lot. Uh, it's good to shoot uh, maybe in the shade. Still, you know, there's, a, there's a, enough light to brighten up your photo, but you're not directly in the sunlight. So maybe in the shade or maybe on like a cloudy, overcast day, something like that. If you're gonna try and shoot with fire and explosions directly in the sunlight, you're just gonna get a bunch of smoke uh, and, a, and a couple of little sparks that you can barely see because the sun is kind of drowning them out. So it's, it's good to have a little bit of a in-between for the explosions. But if you're not going for an action shot, if you're just going for a nice static portrait photo of something that's not necessarily moving and you're not bringing in any other effects or anything like that, you don't necessarily have to worry about having a fast shutter speed. You don't. You can, you can turn it down a little bit and brighten the photo up. You don't necessarily need that. And if you're getting real creative, you can even slow your shutter way down to like 30 seconds long and do some fun light painting or something like that. That's another thing having a slow shutter speed is good for. And I do have a video completely on light painting if you're interested. I'll have it linked right over here. If you want to check it out, it'll also be in the description too. 
Light painting is a ton of fun. I would definitely recommend giving it a try. So when I'm setting up my shot, shutter speed is usually the very first thing I will kind of think about when I'm setting up. And once you kind of have an idea of what you want, you can adjust your shutter speed according to how much movement you're going to have in your photo and then how much light you have. So the next one to talk about is your ISO. And what ISO is, is your camera's sensitivity to light. So ISO can be like a very simple and easy thing to kind of figure out with your camera, but it's also very dangerous. Basically, when you turn your ISO up, the photo brightens. When you turn your ISO down, the photo gets darker, basically. So if you're thinking something like, oh sick, I can just crank up the ISO. <laughs> it's not always a good idea. For me, when I'm taking pictures, I try to keep the ISO below around like 1600 or 800 or anything, nothing really higher than that. Uh, just because if you do crank it up too high, you'll kind of get a nice grainy looking photo and that doesn't always look too nice. So if you're trying to brighten up your photo, just be careful with turning up the ISO a little bit uh, and then maybe think about bringing in some other light, you know, like bringing in a loom cube or the light reflector or just shooting somewhere where there is light already there. And I definitely learned that the hard way. I definitely have some older pictures I look at now and I'm like, oh geez, what was I doing? <laughs> so the last camera setting I really want to focus on is the f-stop or the aperture. So the definition of the f-stop is the opening of a lens's diaphragm in which light passes through or something like that. But when I think of f-stop, I think of focus, focus, focus. So when you have a higher f-stop, you're gonna have a lot of stuff in your photo in focus. Like 10, 11, 12, or even higher, you're gonna get all the background and all this stuff totally in focus. But if your f-stop is a lot lower, like a 1.8 or 2.0, you're gonna be focused on one little thing and then everything else is gonna be all nice and blurred out. And so you're very focused on one specific subject and kind of blurring everything else out. So if you're trying to take a, a toy photo where you're gonna have lots of stuff in focus, where you got like a bunch of different figures in it, you got a really cool background, a bunch of stuff like that, it's good to probably have a higher f-stop, kind of like, uh, oh hey buddy. <laughs> it's kind of good to have a higher f-stop around maybe six or seven or eight or something. So then you have more things in focus and then less things are blurred out. And if you only really have one subject in your photo, one action figure, and you really kind of want the main focal point of the photo to be that one subject, that one action figure, uh, you might want to consider dropping your f-stop lower, 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 lower. I usually have it really low, like as low as I possibly can get it, like 1.8. And that can kind of change depending on your lens. Like my 50 millimeter lens I have on this, uh, it allows me to go as low as 1.8. And when I have it nice and low, it keeps my one action figure very focused. And sometimes so focused that it's just his face and then the rest of his body, his or her face, and the rest of his or her body is totally blurred out. But then everything else behind the action figure is also very, very blurred out. And I kind of like that, I kind of like that effect just because when, when I have the f-stop all high up, I got too much background stuff going on. I don't really like that so much. So I usually keep my f-stop pretty low just because I kind of just like the way that looks. And so how low or how high you can go with your f-stop or your aperture really can depend on what kind of lens you have. And another reason why I love having a low f-stop and having a very out of focus background is getting some really nice bokeh. Anytime your little lights or your sparks or even like water droplets or any little piece of light that's very, very out of focus in the background or even in the foreground of your photo, uh, it's going to turn into this beautiful, nice bokeh and I always, I always try to capture that. So that's one of the reasons why I love having a very low f-stop. And so like all the other settings we talked about, the, the f-stop or the aperture also affects the light and how uh, bright or how dark your photo is. So the lower you go with the f-stop, if you're going way down, like a 1.8, it actually brightens up your photo quite a bit. And that's one of the other reasons why I love having, uh, you know, 1.8 f-stop or something that low, because that way I can turn my shutter speed way up and then turn the f-stop way down and I'll still have a nice, pretty well lit photo. I just gotta make sure I, you know, pay attention to what's in focus and that kind of thing. 
And if you're trying to have uh, a lot of different things to focus, you know, really focus on the background or have a lot of different subjects in your photo, and you end up cranking up your f-stop to a much higher number, you know, like 10 or 11 or something, the photo is going to get darker naturally just by how the lenses work. However that works, I don't, <laughs> I don't really know, but it does get darker. So that's another thing you have to think about too. If you want to have a bunch of stuff in focus and crank the f-stop up, you're gonna want to have light in mind. Again, bringing in some LEDs, some loom cubes, and some bright sunlight or whatever. So it, you gotta keep that in mind for sure. So all of these different settings, all three of these different things, you know, they all affect how bright or how dark or whatever your photo is, and it's a lot to kind of take in at first. So it's really important to be constantly experimenting, trying new things with all three of these, seeing which settings work best for this kind of shot, what settings work best for this kind of shot. Uh, that's basically how I kind of have gotten a hang of these different settings. I mean, I'm, I'm still learning stuff every single time I do it. I still have so much to learn, but knowing a little bit more about each one of these settings has really changed everything for me. It really, really has. And you get much more confident with your photos and you know how to approach your photos differently. So I definitely recommend experimenting with all these. So the next thing I want to do in the video, I want to go outside, I want to set up, and I want to take a photo. And I'm going to walk through my entire thought process I'm going through with adjusting my camera settings to make sure the photo turns out the way I want it to. It's winter right now, so I gotta totally bundle up if I'm gonna be taking some shots outside, so let's go. So, I got this scene set up here. I got a, uh, a Hoth Rebel Trooper over here jumping up, shooting at some, uh, some snow troopers. Uh, there's gonna be some explosions, whatever. I'm gonna start working on my settings to make sure this is you know, gonna work out exactly how I want it to work out. And uh, yeah, let's go. So, I'm going to turn my shutter speed right here to as quick as possible. So I'm gonna turn it up to <laughs> 1 4,000. So it's pretty dark. It's pretty dark right now, so you can't really see too much going on in here. So, uh, right now we're at f11, which is way higher than I want. So I want to be mo see most of it out of focus, but I want the rebel trooper to be very in focus, and still have like the uh, the snow troopers out of focus a little bit, and I also want to have a little bit of bokeh with my explosion. So I think 3.2 will be low enough to the point where I have enough focus in the spots I want it, and so already. Look at that's looking so much better. Right now it's at 1600. I can bring that down. That I don't need all this light. So it's actually like an overcast day outside and just snow on the ground. So just that alone brings enough light right there. So let's change that. Let's see how it looks. Um, it's a little bit, a little bit dark. You know, I'm gonna turn the 3.2 down. Maybe 2.5 on the f-stop. And you know what, that's actually looking, I think quite how I, exactly how I want it. So I got a fast shutter speed at 1 4,000, so I have a good crispy action explosion. For my f-stop, I have a 2.5, it's nice and low. Uh, if your camera doesn't go this low, it's still probably gonna look just fine if it's at, you know, maybe like a 5.6 or something. So 2.5, I like it low, so I can have good bokeh, and I have the Rebel Trooper in focus, and then the Snow Troopers are out of focus and that all kind of works out. And I don't need a whole lot of light, so 800 is still decently high, but I don't need it to be too much higher than that because we got enough light outside right now. So I think we got everything set up the way we want it, so I'm gonna take a couple fireworks, play some in a couple spots and set them off, take a bunch of photos, and see what we uh, see what we get. I might have to adjust the settings depending on how it looks, but I think it's pretty good. So let's go for it. I also am gonna make sure my, let's see here, continuous shooting, so. I'm taking a burst of photos, so I want to have continuous shooting on because I'm going to take a ton of them all at once. No timer or anything for this. Uh, all right. 
right, so actually it's a little brighter out than I realized and fireworks don't usually show up too great with snow because the snow is white, you know, black background usually works better. So I'm gonna step it up and add a little bit bigger of a firework. Alright, so even before editing or anything, right in the camera, the shot looks pretty sweet. So just to add some final touches, I'm just going to go in with maybe some sparklers, get a couple other little sparks in different places to get some, just some nice little things here and there. Uh, and then I'll show you the final product after editing and all that stuff. And if you're interested in how I edit and put all this stuff together, I have a full editing tutorial as well. Uh, I'll have it linked right here. Also, it's in my tutorials playlist, so make sure to check that out too if you're interested. Okay, well, thank you so much for watching the video. Uh, I really hope it gave you a little bit more of an understanding of camera settings and stuff like that. All of the shots that I'm posting are always gonna be on Instagram, uh, Facebook and Twitter, stuff like that. It's all linked below. I'm at SirDork730. If you have any other questions, feel free to comment below, send me messages. I'm more than happy to always try to help in any way I possibly can. Thank you all so much. I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>